First lesson, St. Mark chapter 1, verse 6. And John was clothed with camel's hair and with a girdle of a skin about his loins, and he did eat locusts and wild honey. If you begin to eat fruits from today, brethren, you will no longer grow old. You will not be sick and you will not have any pains. You will ever be young. You will no longer know what it means to be angry. Your eyes will be open and you will see God face to face as you enjoy this kingdom. You will have much blood, power and vitality when you refrain from meat. Death, sickness and luck will be afraid of you. When you refrain from meat and fish, you will no longer know anger and troubled heart. You will experience real bliss and peace in your innermost heart. You will always be happy because the Father dwells in you and you in Him. You will see His glory every day. It is because of disobedience that you kill animals for your meat and as a result you suffer. When it is reported that somebody is fat, why is he fat? Is it not the result of stealing, prostitution, and surfeiting? Is obesity a good thing? Come to think of the effect of meat on man. God created fishes, hens, and goats and put them in very lowly and dishonorable places. When you eat their meat, where do you find yourself? Can you not realize how you are living as beasts? Even animals are no wiser than you. If you no longer eat meat, Morning houses will cease to be kept. Necromancers and juju doctors will fold up. All the secret societies in the world will cease to exist. Consequently, you will no longer have any problems. You will feel sound and happy. Brethren, I want you to come in and enjoy this kingdom. People will no longer die. Because animals you kill are human and when you stop killing them, they will no longer die and human beings will consequently not die as a result. People will no longer be sick, goats will not be missing, animals will no longer be killed but will be allowed to carry on their businesses while human beings go on with theirs. In that way, life will be worth living for both men and animals. What makes up civilization? Brethren, open-eyed blindness is a grievous sickness. When you claim that you are civilized and your eyes are open, what evidence of civilization do you have? Do you think civilization subsumes speaking and reading in languages. Engineering is not a product of any language. Language is not used in manufacturing or inventing anything. It is the product of God's knowledge. Do you think that the person who invented airplane was learned? It does not require being learned. God is the one who teaches man to do everything without the direct application of any languages. It is said, when the Comforter comes, he will guide you into all truth. If we are able to maintain our purity and sanctity and practice this injunction of God, we will be conversing and rejoicing with God. You will no longer argue that God is in the sky, but you will see him face to face. He will use you to wrought mighty works. In all things you shall be free. When people talk, 
of going to mountains or to Jerusalem. What actually do you go to, to do there? Here is God before you, conversing with you, but you your but your sight has been blurred and your eyes and your ears blocked by the meat and fish which God has directed you not to eat. God is not far from any person, but we ruin ourselves, most especially by eating meat and fish. This way you defile the temple of God and <clears throat> it attracts perdition and sickness into our system. When you eat goat meat, the goat will seek a place of abode in you and begin to move around in you. These animals that you eat move in you and you complain that you are poisoned or charmed. There is no one poisoning you, but you have introduced foreign bodies into your system. Whatever tastes delicious in the mouth of a sick man, that will e eat and die, says a local adage. What whoever continues to eat meat has been built for perdition. The reason is that I cannot see why your life can be adversely affected if you do not eat meat. It rather helps you to live a better and more pleasant and more pleasant life. If you go to many parts of the world, like Jerusalem, they neither know nor have a lot of food stuff as we have here, but rather they live on fruits. You claim that the whites are powerful and civilized. That is due to the fact that more of them practice veganism. As I am teaching you now, it is not pleasing to those who have pre-knowledge of this truth, since they feel they had spent a lot of money to acquire this knowledge. This lesson is not acquired free. It is a very significant and efficacious lesson, but I have given to you free of charge. You complain that your dreams and are confusing and that you cannot remember your dreams as you used to do when you were young. Your dreams should be confused because of the meat and fish you introduce into your body, which defile the body. Experiment from today. Now that you have heard this gospel, as the scripture says, today, when you hear his voice, harden not your heart. If you keep to this prescription of God and eat only what you are told to eat, you will witness a remarkable change. Your eyes will be opened, your ears will be opened, and your understanding will be broadened. You will hear and witness the glory of God as well as find peace for your soul and long life for yourself. The second lesson will now be read. Second lesson, Romans chapter 14 verse 21. It is good neither to eat fish. It is good neither to eat flesh, nor to drink wine, nor anything whereby thy brother stumbleth, or is offended, or is made weak. I know that those who sell meat products will be angry, but their anger cannot affect me. The world seeks for life where there is none. God kept time for everything. The time of foolishness is past. This is the time for the Holy Spirit to lead you to the knowledge of truth. As has been rendered in a song by one of the choirs, the world is looking for a life where life cannot be found. Do not eat meat anymore. 
do not drink wine, do not kill and eat hens, goats, or any animal, for they do us no good. Eating of meat does not admit you into the kingdom of God. Refraining from meat does not remove you from the kingdom of God. What therefore is the use of eating meat? There are many people who will kill and eat human flesh in the absence of hens and goats. About 99% of the inhabitants of Africa are cannibals. If we no longer eat fish or meat, there will be no more killings and we will not only have peace but we will see God. Be al alive, be rich and devoid of all problems. Complaints of meat poisoning, fish poisoning and so forth will be a thing of the past since you eat neither fish nor meat. Anger, troubled heart and repression will no longer be experienced. At all times you will feel pleased. At all times the Holy Spirit will dwell in you and you will have the feelings of satisfaction, peace, good health and power. Meat defiles the temple of God. When you eat meat or fish and pass effluvium, the obnoxious smell will cause every person around you to run from you. The reason is that your system is dirty and the air reflects your inner self. What do you think your body looks like in this light? God is not there with you because the temple is defiled. You are the temple of the Most High God. It is said that whoever defiles the temple of the Most High, him shall God destroy. You destroy the temple of God by eating meat and fish. There is nothing that I can safely point to as the benefit, as the benefit one derives from eating meat. I have not seen its usefulness to man. The only thing I see in meat consumption is itself punishment, death, lack, sickness, tribulations to man and the departure of God from his own house. People always cry that God should help them to refrain from fornication. But why is it that you cannot defeat the younger son and you go to challenge the elder son to a fight? If you do not refrain from eating meat and fish, how can you refrain from fornication? If you do not refrain from eating meat and fish, how can you refrain from hunger? If you do not refrain from eating meat and fish, how will the Holy Spirit dwell in your heart? Abstinence from meat is inborn in me. I thank God immensely because at first I wondered what kind of life I was living without eating meat and fish. But I know that the Father was doing his work. You cannot have anything except God gives it to you. I tried as a man to eat meat or fish but could not. It is not that it is lawful to me to eat meat or fish, but I neither need or appreciate them. I have never treated them since I was I have never tasted them since I was born. I have no business with such things. When one complains that he has the urge to eat meat, I wonder what stimulates such urges in man. I have no business with meat or fish. Since I know myself, I did not know that the Father wanted to do a significant thing for the people of the world. Were it not so, how will I preach this gospel? When you argue that you want to be like the Father, what do you imply in your argument? But you have neither refrained from meat or fish. Can you realize 
because of the downfall of many in the Brotherhood of the Cross and Star? Can you also realize the power in Brotherhood of the Cross and Star? You complain that the leader has not shown you the source of power here in Brotherhood of the Cross and Star. Have I not revealed this power to you today? Those who eat meat are now very sorrowful and do not knock their heads on the ground. God loves the generation, God loves this generation immensely. As he had sent John to live that sort of life and to leave an example for mankind, so does he teach us purity and sanctity. You know that maize by itself is food. Banana, plantain, oranges and other fruits are more than sufficient. I do not know what has become of the inhabitants of the world. The lesson taught to you now is not an extract from any book, neither is it reference made to any authority. I was born with this understanding. This gospel is a bombshell to the world. Brethren, it is high time that you are crowned. Do you see the gentle progression from simple to complex? We started with telling you to refrain from sin, removing all its vestiges from you. The gospel delivered today is a giant leap. I know that many people find it difficult even to say hallelujah, especially when they begin to weigh the possibilities of refraining from meat. Today, the urge to eat meat is taken from you. The inhabitants of the world will shout when they listen to today's gospel. Leader Abu has killed them that he has instructed that people should no longer eat meat or fish. They will ask, what does he want them to do? I have prescribed what is required of man to eat. People who sell animal or meat products and restaurant owners, some who are even present in this hall, are almost terrified are almost petrified. They are thinking of what to do with the animal and meat they have in stock and pleading that I should give them a little more time. Did you know all this while you were killing people and yourself, also defiling the temple of God? It is for this reason that your sensitivity to minor threats is high when a little thing happens, you will die. You, you age out within a few years. If you begin today to refrain from meat and fish, you will ever remain young, healthy and beautiful. All the body requirements will remain intact. If all refrain from eating meat, animals would not be killed. You may argue that you have not slaughtered any animals. You only buy the meat you only buy the meat and eat. If you stop eating, the person killing animals for sale will not find market for his trade. When you say that somebody is very troublesome, it makes it takes two persons and not one to cause confusion. It is good neither to eat flesh nor to drink wine, nor do anything whereby thy brother stumbles, or is offended, or is made weak. Meat and fish issue brings offense and confusion to the inhabitants of the world. Many of the calamities in the world come as a result of eating meat and fish. Let all the inhabitants of the world thank God because the Holy Spirit has come at this end of time to lead man to the accurate knowledge of truth. If this type of gods were delivered in days of old that people should not eat meat, the preacher would not only be the object of ridicule, 
but would stand the chance of losing his head. But now I am preaching this gospel with boldness because millions of people in the world have already become vegans today. Millions are also looking for the way to becoming one. That is why the Father throws the way wide open for the entire world to enter in and receive eternal life. When you light candles, burn incense, and accompany your worship with orchestra music in your church, I say, stop drumming. Go and practice, go and practice this gospel. If you want power from on high, stop eating meat and fish. Stop drinking fornication and committing other vices. By that, you will have power and will see the glory of God. Your eyes will be opened and you will see God face to face. I do not say you will only hear his voice, but that you will see him physically. You will also swim in the ocean of good health and enjoy enormous wealth. You will express with surprise whether God had been around you all along.